okay? Is this mic on? Can you hear me okay? <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right. Okay. <laughs> All right. At the count of three, if you can hear me, give me a pokey. A pokey thumb, a pokey kiss, or a pokey wow. All right. One, two. No. Wait. Wait. All at once. One, two, three. <laughs> you guys are great. I love you. All right. And answer a very important question. And that question is, is sort of along the lines of, if I have the TVS training program, where do I go? What path do I follow in my training to get the most efficient progress? Um, and... Uh, how do I know when to to move on to a, to the next workout to the next exercise? These are fairly decent questions, and I'm going to, going to attempt to uh, give it to you a little bit quicker today. Okay, first of all, I'm going to give you guys what I believe to be the answer to this question, which is how often how often should I train? How often should I do the workouts and stuff to, to build the motor skills and the coordination to get a result? And I have a really good answer for you on that. And it is as follows. <clears throat> 30 to 120 minutes. 30 to 120 minutes per training session. Okay? We're accounting for family, jobs, busy lifestyles, 30 to 120 minutes, all right? Uh, we're going to call this per session. A minimum of, geez, it's awful. A minimum of three to six days. A week, 30 to 120 minutes per practice session, three to six days a week, a minimum of three days, okay? Especially you beginners out there. For how long? Boop. Depending upon the individual, depending upon your experience, your anatomy, you know, different elements. There's a lot of variables involved in this, but based on my experience, this is a fair statement. I'd say mm, 90 to, oh, uh, just at the outside, 180 days per week, by the way. This is per week. All right. You guys see this? We have 30 to 120 minutes per session, per practice session, okay? If you only got, if you're short on time, give it 30. If you've uh, got a lot of time, give it 120 or uh, minutes if you can, okay? Three, a minimum of three to six days per week, all right? And for 90 to 100, 180 days. And if you do that to equal what? To what, for, for what results? For what results are, are we shooting for? The results that, that um, I think we're all sort of shooting for, and, and I'll, I'll confirm that for you, the ability to, ability to sing seamlessly from the chest voice through the vocal break and into the head voice without your voice breaking, without instability issues, without sounding windy and falsetto-y on top, to have a full connected uh, voice with good compression, without choking, without squeezing, without the voice breaking, and being able to belt into your head voice. Doesn't matter what style of singing you want to do, that's what everybody wants typically, and it's certainly, as a coach, I'll tell you, it's what everybody needs, okay? You have to be able to registrate through chest voice, vocal break, in the head voice, okay? And and be able to build the musculature and the motor skills to sound booming and big on top. And you know, that's what, that's 
that's what I that's what I do. That's what I've dedicated my life to. That's what this book here, the four pillars of singing, that that I wrote and the online course, the, the courses that we've written that go with it. That's it's not the whole story, but that's a big part of it. Learning to register your voice, increase your increase your range, right? And learning to sing with freedom and all that without choking. Okay? This is what it takes. If you want to get serious, write this down. Put it on your on your dream wall or whatever and in your training space. Especially for beginners. Okay? Not not maybe maybe not for me, although it's good for me. And maybe not for Ken Tamplin, although it's good for Ken too. You know, professionals, things like this. But for sure, you beginners out there, for sure. Bridging and connecting, full registration of the voice, freedom, no choking, no pushing. Everything sounds great. Your life is transformed forever. Okay, you know how to do this. You know how to train. 30 to 120 minutes per session, three to six days a week for 90 to 180 days. Okay, that's what it takes. Now, next question. <laughs> Did you guys get this? All right. <laughs> All right. Now, the next question is in regards to the Four Pillars of Singing, our training program, a, a popular question is All right, um, got the program, I'm training. Um, where do I go? Uh, where do I start? How does it work? Um, and, and to get the most, the most out of my 30 to 120 minutes, how do I do this? Um, because the Four Pillars of Singing is a really big program. There's, there's a lot of places to go, so it's sort of helpful to kind of clarify this. The first thing you can do is, as I want you guys to, to realize, is one, there are, there are two user interfaces. You have my course, and then you have my training. Okay, in the training program, there are two user interfaces. Those of you that are Udemy students that have the light version of the program, um, the course or the lecture content, by the way, this equals lectures, okay? Lectures, lectures, it's what I'm doing right now. I'm lecturing, I have a, have a lavalier in here, a little lavalier, a little tiny lavalier mic, okay? I've got a whiteboard. This is Professor Robert lecturing, giving you concepts, um, things like that, okay? I want to make sure we're clear on that. The My Training page is training, okay? It's different. There's a difference between Professor Rob lecturing with Falavalier and Robert taking the jacket off and grabbing the microphone and getting out here in the middle of the floor and singing some, some scales and some songs, okay? That's called training, actually running around the track, all right? In our program... There's two user interfaces. So Udemy people, the lectures are found at Udemy. Okay, you just, you just it's, you go to the left side and that's where you get all the video lectures, okay? But when you're ready to train, when you're ready to put this mic in your hand and go do the scales and the workouts and things, then you go out to the external training page. And the external training page is found in lecture number two. So at, at Udemy, you go to lecture number two, there's a link and a password. You bop out and you get out to the external training page where you find all of the vocal workouts. It's really light on lectures. There's a few sort of introductions on the workouts and there's demonstration videos of me doing the workouts with a quick little introduction. But for the most part, it's training content. It's, it's a video of me training, not lecturing, and it's audio files, MP3 files that you stream that have solo piano workouts, okay? That's the Udemy people. For those of you that are fortunate, to, fortunate enough to have the full course, the full version of the program on my website, you're going to go up to the top right corner, drop down menu, and you're going to click on my course to get to the lectures, all right? They're the same lectures in Udemy, but they have more content, bonus bonus videos, um, quizzes, they're, they're a little bit more detailed, they have more features and advantages to it, okay? And then the, up, up the top right corner, you click on my training and you go to the training page. It's the same training page that the Udemy people have, all right, but it's all in one website, which makes things a lot easier 
you get the full book, you get download files. All the, all the, there's a lot of benefits to the full course, and I can give you guys a link to that at the end of this, um, at the end of this broadcast. I'll go ahead and do that. But I, just, but I don't want to get into that so much right now. I just want to make sure that everybody, regardless of whether you're a Udemy external page person or you're a full course person on my website all the time, that you know where to go, okay? And that you understand that training TVS is Professor Rob, listen to lectures, learn, get smart, and then absolutely training, building motor skills, working out, okay? The, working with what we call in fancy voice lesson circles, the vocalese, the vocalese, okay? Vocalese is just fancy voice lesson talk or vocal workout, okay? So that's the user interface on the training the TVS method. You guys got this? Did you write this down? Got this? Okay, great. Next question. See how we're doing here. Blah, blah, blah. Rock gigs, booking, blah, blah, blah. Kevin, just want to make sure that everything's still rolling forward. Okay, you guys. All right. So then the next question is now we, we have our, our, our deal. The next question is, well, where do I go? How, I mean, okay, all right. There's all these lectures and then there's all this training content, but it's big. <laughs> it's, you know, the four pillars of singing is 22.5 hours of nonstop content before it repeats. <laughs> okay. So, so I, I, you know, where do you start? What do you do? Okay. Here's what I would recommend. Number one, you can do this a couple different ways. Number one, I recommend that you go out to the lectures, okay? You go to the lectures, and if you're short on time, you focus on these modules in the lectures. On my website, Full Course, it's called a module. Out at Udemy, it's the same thing. They call it a section, okay? So modules and sections. These are the modules and sections you will focus on. Number A. Okay, TVS methodology. Okay, the TVS method. There's a, there's a module called the TVS method. It's just a collection of overview lectures on the training method. All right, it's a good place to start. All right, so make sure you focus on that. Two, B, the TVS onsets. The TVS onsets are how we start and begin notes. And also the exploration and, the, and, and learning about onsets is really important because what it does for singers is it sort of introduces you into the magical world of phonetics, the magical world of consonants and vowels, and how sort of understanding the phonetics that exist in our lyrics when we sing and then doing training techniques that represent those phonetics, how, how understanding the consonants and the vowels in training can greatly improve your progress and help you fix problems in your voice, all right? So this is a, the onsets just mean the start, and it's a set of techniques that get right down to the code, right down to the code of singing, and it all, like, it all sort of sits inside consonants and vowels and what we do with them when we're trying to speak them or in our world, sing them, okay? You have to understand that. And if you do, it's sort of like, oh, it's, sort of, it's like the Rosetta Stone. It sort of opens up, answers a lot of questions and open, creates a lot of opportunity for training and fixing problems, okay? Onsets are important. Next, C, um, the uh, physical modes, the physical modes. The physical modes module out the full course and section out at, uh, at Udemy, okay? Physical modes just simply needs um, eight physical positions that the larynx can, can configure into, all right, that produce a, 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 a well-known, well-studied, well-researched, well um, well-experienced by many of us, uh, vocal quality, a physical, sort of a physical configuration that creates a certain sound color and certain capabilities. For example, what I'm doing right now is one of the eight physical modes. It's called speech mode. I'm speaking to you. I'm not singing. 
I'm not crying. I'm not distorting. Um, I'm not sobbing. I'm not in falsetto. I'm speaking to you in my chest voice. The, the physical configuration, all right, the, the muscles, the ligaments, the tendons, and even the, the, the phonetics we were talking about, okay? The, the, the way the, the consonants and the vowels and the resonance and my tongue and my upper palate and the articulators are all sort of working to speak to you right now are all unique characteristics, sort of a, sort of a package of technical elements that make up a physical mode we call speech, okay? And we're all familiar with it. We've all, we're all very good at that, good at that. But there are other modes in the physical modes that are, are more exotic. They're, they're, they're less known. And some of them you have to practice. You have to train, okay, to build these other exotic physical modes. That is to say that the larynx and the position of, of you know, the vocal mechanism can configure itself into exotic, high-performance, athletic positions uh, not for speech, but to enable us to sing, enable us to amplify complex melodic patterns at really high frequencies, which is what we do when we sing, okay? So underneath the physical modes, the two modes for people that are busy that you really need to understand and train, I think probably the most important are twang, <laughs> vocal twang mode, okay? Just sort of re sort of relates to just compression of the vocal folds and two Japanese music any takers out there this is pretty obvious we talk about it all the time two three two one and yes it is in fact it is cry mode cry mode cry mode gets an explanation point and a big giant star cry mode all right. So twang, we have to have we have to have a lot of these modes that come up in like sob and opera and distortion that they're relevant to singing as well. But most important for people that are busy, you need to understand twang and you need to understand cry mode for sure. Okay, cry mode is probably next to vowels, next to the phonetics and vowels. It's probably the most important thing. It's it's I would think it's probably the most important physical mode to be aware of. Right? What does it mean? Briefly, uh, there's big lectures on it. Go into the program, watch the lectures. But just briefly, when we put our larynx, when we configure our larynx into the physical configuration that it goes into when we cry, when we're emotionally sad, and when we weep, and when we cry, right? It, it, and and we take that that physical position, and we instead of crying emotionally sad through it, if we take that configuration and sing through it. Well, as many of you have discovered, as I've discovered, miraculous things happen. Oh, suddenly the vocal folds are thinned out, which gives us agility. We get an increase in um, medial compression and all the pharyngeal constriction can go away. Like all the pushing and choking goes away if you sing through cry mode. Great singing, great singing is not much more Okay, got to have a good embouchure and a good vowel and other things. But it's not much more than command and control of the cry reflex. Don't forget that. Don't forget that. Okay? Let this be maybe a, a moment for you that you never forget. The day you caught Robert's live broadcast on Facebook and it was, he was going off and doing his thing, but he made this one comment I'll never forget and what he said that I'll never forget, which was, Great singing is not much more than command and control of the cry reflex. All right? You'll learn all about it in the physical modes module. The last three lectures are cry mode, and then you're going to practice it. Okay? All right, what else? You need A, B, C, D. You need the acoustic modes. Okay? Acoustic modes out at the lectures on the Udemy or the main program. You're going to study the acoustic modes. Acoustic modes. What does that mean? Well, it's a group of 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 um, singing vowels. Okay, a, a group of um, a set of ten 
resonation regions or res resonation places that, that sit in the upper vocal tract when we sing, okay? Those 10 resonation regions or singing vowels um, are broken up into three groups. There are the forward resonant vowels, which we call edging vowels, all right? They tend to, they tend to resonate in the forward hard palate off the top teeth, okay? They're, they're in this position. And then there's another group called neutral vowels, and they tend to resonate in their natural default in sort of a central position, in the middle of the um, oral cavity in the upper vocal tract. And then there's the back, the back resonant vowels, which are called curbing vowels. And in their natural state, they, they tend to kind of resonate back here in a soft palate position. Now, understanding these 10 vowels that, make, that are inside of three groups, forward, middle, and back resonation regions, understanding this is really helpful to understanding singing vowels and um, how reson how resonation moves around in the in the upper vocal tract. Okay, just something that singers have to do. When we're singing, we're we're worrying about the physical mode cry, and we're you know we're worrying about the onset. There's there's lots of things that we're sort of focusing on, especially when we're training and we're new to all this. And add to that is feeling the resonance. Okay, now know this that that and so this is a good tip something i learned just along the way in the foxhole in the front lines of doing this every single day and that is this that a curbing vowel such as a uh, can be manipulated to edge forward okay just because the book says that it's a curbing vowel understand that the graphics inside the book and the course are just sort of a a default reference it's sort of its natural state not actively manipulated by the singer okay but through training one thing that we can do is we can learn to take those back resonant curbing vowels and resonate them forward to the hard palate you can turn a curbing vowel into an edging vowel i see the likes the important point I mean, check it out in the book in the course the important point that i want you guys to make that, and understand is that curbing vowels through training can be edged. Neutral vowels can be edged. And what I've discovered through day-to-day -day training is that edging resonance, a forward resonance in the hard palate is where you want to put most of your, pretty much all your training and most of your singing. Okay? But the body wants to go to a curbing position. When you're singing, you can feel it. If you're aware of it, you can sort of, sort of feel it. You're sort of singing along and you can feel the, um, the, the resonance sort of falling back to this lazy position back here. You can feel it and I want you guys to be aware of that. It's sort of trying to go to curbing. Curbing, back resonant, back soft out resonance, it's sort of the lazy position for the voice. It's where it goes when it doesn't know where else to go, where, when it's not actively being manipulated to go forward to the edging position. So your edging vowels will be edging, your neutral vowels should be, should be, you should try to edge them, and your curbing vowels, ooh, uh, oh, and uh, try to make them go forward to, your, to the edging position when you're training, when you're singing, okay? The next thing that I want you to focus on in terms of TBS methodology, out at the lectures, saving time for people that are busy, but you want to get this, you want to become a better singer. Integrated training routines. And in some sense, that's where all of this is headed. Okay, it's sort of the end game. It's, it's sort of the thing that's, in my opinion, that's probably the most innovative idea that comes out of the book in the online course. The, the really cool special sauce, and that is that after you got an overview of the methodology, after you've studied the onsets, 
in particular, okay? After you've studied the onsets and you understand their features, advantages, and benefits and how they help you, and you've trained, you've gone through physical modes, and in particular, you've been practicing cry mode, so that your training and your singing has a, has, has a proper physical anatomy, proper configuration, the mechanism has a proper platform to train and sing over. Because without it, you're not going to be able to do it. Without cry mode, you won't be able to sing. How do you like that? So learn how to do it. So you got the onsets, the cry mode, and the acoustic modes, understanding vowels. When you understand the onsets, and you got a good singing platform with cry mode, and then you understand the vowels, what we do that's unique, what you do, what I do every day, what I want you to do, is we then build what we call integrated training routines, or ITRs. What's an ITR? An ITR is a vocal workout that is smart. It's a workout that that I put together or that you put together together as TBS method trained singers. We don't just do vocal workouts. We don't just go to the training page and just do vocal workouts, really. I mean, not if you want to do this all the way, this method. What we do, me and you, as TBS students, is we we look at a vocal workout in a different way that other people don't. And that is, when we see a workout, we see um, scale, you know, notes, a, a scale to follow. That we see that. We see what everybody else sees. But what we see that they don't see because of our training is we see onsets. And we see vowels. When I look at a workout, I see I see notes, I see a vocalese. Okay, that's great. But I'm also thinking about how am I going to start? Am I going to start on a nasal may, or am I going to start on a plosive b, or am I going to start on a on a glottal attack straight into a vowel a? These are all different onsets, and depending upon how I start, how I onset into my workout, that's going to change the mechanism. That's going to give me a different result. If I start with a track and release onset, I get a nice balance of compression and resp respiration. That's sort of the benefits. If I start with a plosive, big, off a, off, you know, off a B, something that pops, oh, well, I get a little bit more, a little bit more energy. I get a little, I can harness some energy out of the, the explosive properties of starting with a plosive consonant. What that does, it gets my legs to sit down. It engages more TA uh, musculature uh, stability. It's, it's sort of a resistance training, sort of a beefy onset. It's good for belting. If I start with a glottal attack, if I start with the attack and release onset, then I'm doing carefully controlled chaotic crashes of my vocal folds, which is actually a very healthy thing. And again, I'm, 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 I'm getting more closed quotient, I'm getting more TA muscle engagement, all of the belt stuff, the stuff that I want to sound chesty on top, I'm, I'm increasing my productivity and my chances for success if I, I, I grab the attack and release onset and I plug it in to my workout, you see? Today I want to work on a balance of compression and respiration. Oh, okay, I'll grab the, the, the track and release on set. Oh, tomorrow I'm going to work on my belting, so I'm going to grab the attack and release on set, the glottal tax, and plug it into my workout. You see what's happening here? And also, just like the onsets change the mechanism and sort of give me a different a different portfolio of benefits and features and things based on what I want to work on or what I'm going after, okay? The onsets are cool that way. Well, the thing is, is same with the vowels. The vowels, those acoustic modes I was talking about, those 10 resonant regions, they too, each, each vowel has a unique formant resonance position. Each vowel has, a, it, you know, some vowels are a little bit more narrowed in the upper vocal tract and other vowels a little bit more 
wide and bigger and broad in the upper vocal tract. So they have to be manipulated and different, and they feel different, okay? So if I want to work on my belting, you know, where this is all going, okay? And I want to get a good belting voice on top in the shortest amount of time because I got a job and a family and I can only do it 30 minutes a day. What do I do? I create an ITR that consists of a dampen and release onset going into A, the A training valve, and then I do a glottal attack and attack and release onset off the top. And in the middle of the workout is a melodic fit siren. Okay? So the three elements of an integrated training routine are onsets, vowels, and training content. The scales, the workouts, the media that you get when you when you purchase the program. Okay? You have your media, you plug like Legos, you, you plug onsets at the end of, at the ends of these workouts. And then you choose a vowel in the middle. And by understanding the unique features, advantages, and benefits of every onset and every vowel, it allows you to customize your own training workouts to address your own unique problems for your voice. Nobody's ever done that before. And it's cool. I like it. Integrated training routines. Build your own workouts, but you won't really, like, you won't really be able to on your own and really understand it fully until you do your homework, until you until you study the onsets and you study the vowels and you learn how to do crime mode. Okay, study the onsets, study the vowels, get really good at crime mode, get good at training and singing through a crying mechanism. Okay, do those things, and then you're just then you're able to kind of put together your own training routines, your own ITOs. And then cool things can happen. All right? I'm going to write this up here. This is important. Huh. Oh, I'm sorry. Did you guys get this? Okay. Good. That's what they do at school. At school, the teacher always says, hey, did you guys get this? All right. So I want to write this down. Get ready to write this down. Okay, University of Professor Ro Professor Robert. Okay, here we go. I want you to write this down. An ITR sort of the end game. An integrated training routine consists of three elements, three things you need to understand and, and, and study and train. One, onsets. Start and a stop, okay? Well, not, and a not stop would be an offset, but really how we start, okay? Two, vowels, which is our acoustic modes, right? How am I doing on time? Doing okay. Vowels. And three, the product files, the workouts, the MP3s. The, the content, okay? Sort of the, you know, the practical facilities that you purchased. So you grab it, so you, so you gra grab a workout, maybe it's a siren, maybe it's a blues workout, there's 32 of them in the program. You get a workout, you plug in your onsets, and you choose a valve. And you plug in the onset that is going to address your needs. And you might have different needs. You might want more compression. You might want less compression. You might want a belt. You might want to cry more. Whatever it is, figure it out. Choose the right onset to fix that need. And you have to choose the right resonance, the right vowels to onset into that you're going to be training over when you're doing the workout. So an ITR has three components, onsets, vowels, and content. Okay? Did you guys get this? All right. Cool.
Okay. So now um, let's get back to the, you know, the, we got into that because the question was, where do I start? What do I do? And what I was trying to do is I was trying to encourage you to learn the method. And those are the, the modules or the sections in the lecture part of the program where you're going to learn the method. And you can see that it's not just geeking out and being sort of academic about things. No, not when you eventually take it down to learning the ITRs. The ITRs is sort of the payoff after doing all your study. You realize, oh, this is really cool. I can, I can write my own workout. Okay, so I'm recommending that you do that. You be a good student, you study, you learn the methodology so you can write your own ITRs. Okay, then make sure that the other thing that I want you to do, let's just, let's, let's, let's pull up that. That's called study so you can learn how to make your own ITRs. One, study so you can do your own integrated training routines. That's the ideal situation. Two, in the training page, for UW people, in the external training page, up at the top, and for the full course people, up at the top, the same training page, you're gonna find the um, training workflow guides. Training workflow guides. Training workflow guides out of the training page, not the lecture interface. At the very top, there's a link that says training workflow guides. Click on the link and it'll open up a window that has a bunch of workflows. Okay, when I say workflows, I mean a box and an arrow, a box and an arrow, a box and an arrow. And it just, it's just, it's a sort of a mind map or workflow that I've created for you guys that gives you a visual on sort of what to work on inside this big program, okay? There is a, uh, there's, a pro, there's a there's a workflow in there that I think it's called something like, like the 30 minute quick start or the quick practice training uh, workflow. So it has suggestions of workouts, okay? And in the sequence that you should do them for if you only have 30 minutes, like the 30 minute workout workflow, okay? Then there's one for beginners. I'm a beginner, where do I start? Best practice recommendations in this workflow, this little flow chart. And then there's one called intermediate and advanced, and you'll see that it begins to sort of, the tentacles begins to spread out. You're learning more, more onsets, you're learning more vows, it's getting a little bit more detailed. Probably starting to do your first own customized ITRs, okay? And then there's a fourth one called the foundation building routine, all right? The foundation building routine is what I call a compound routine. It is, it is all, in some sense, all you ever really need. It incorporates the warm-ups, onset work, onset and sirens work, and then further explorations of the ITRs with the rest of the workouts, the other 32. In some sense, all four phases on the training page are sort of bundled into a compound routine called the foundation building routine, all right? The foundation building routine was something that I put together years ago before um, the course, uh, before ITRs were developed before the current courses as they are today were completed and developed. It, it, it sort of represents an idea that came from the past where it was, it was a seed, it was the beginning of sort of what we're talking, or what, what became TVS today, okay? And it was the first attempt to, where I realized, gosh, these guys need, need direction. My students need to follow a routine. They need to kind of know what to do next. It was my first attempt to give you guys exactly what I'm doing today to answer the question, where do I go, what do I do? 
Okay, so I created this foundation building routine. It's kind of big, and because it has several several routines inside of it, it's a compound routine, the FBR, sort of the old school TVS stuff. But it's great. It it's in it's in the training workflow guides because it works. It's it's still viable. Some people have never seen it before, and other people like I just do the FBR. I, that's all I need. Okay, that's fine. All right, so it was something that was cool. It makes sense, so it's in there too. So you have a third, yeah, so the training workflow guides at the top of the training page. Click on that. It'll take you out to another, so bounce you out to another box.net website, and you'll see these workflows. That can help you a lot, okay? And the next thing I want to say, and we'll wrap this up this morning. Three. Listen internally. And visualize. Listen internally and visualize. What do I mean by that? So you studied and you understand the methodology and you're building your own ITRs. Cool. You've gone out to the to the training page and you've gone to the training workflow guides and you're sort of following its recommendations. Great, that's helpful. But in the end, no amount of 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 uh, uh, of, of content or, or training guides or jumping on the group and asking asking the question, where do I go, what do I do? No, and me repeating myself over and over again, it's okay, that's, that's my job, I'm here to help you guys. But at some point, this is important, at some point, all singers, all vocal training students, through the act of training and working every single day on your voice, you're responsible for visualizing the results that you want. You're responsible for visualizing the sound colors that you want to hear in your voice. And that might not be the same for everybody. Some people might want to sound like Ronnie James Dio, and other people might want to sound like Sam Smith. You know, it, it, it's all good. You need to visualize. You need to take accountability for your own progress as well, outside of these tools that I've provided for you. And that happens by visualizing the colors that you want and even sort of the physical kinesthetic feelings that you that you want, that you think, you feel like you want to experience when you're training these workouts and when you're singing. And if you have a certain color of, of, a, of a vowel or a certain feeling that you have, in regards to the training, you're you're singing a scale, or you're uh, singing a song. You'll know whether your voice and your body is giving you what you're asking it to give you, and oftentimes it won't. So you train and you figure it out and you work on it, and then then one day you'll step up. You'll be visualizing that same color, that same vibe uh, that you want to make your voice that you want your voice to sound like this okay and it'll start coming around okay because you've been training I can't tell you what that end product um, exact what it is for everybody because everybody has a different visual for that all I can do is give you tools and a course and great techniques and encourage you to to you know learn onsets get into cry mode understand your vowels and make sure that you can bridge your presagio. And, and here's here's a, a great program and a book to help you with that. But but I can't I can't hold your hand and take you all the way, you know, to to the goal line. That that last 40 yards you've got to run yourself. Okay, and it comes by by listening internally and visualizing what you want. And then you make a judgment call, damn it, I'm not getting what I want to hear. Or fantastic, I am getting what I want to hear. 
And if you're not getting what you want to hear, what you do is you go, mm, darn it, I'm not getting what I want to hear. So mm, let's go back up here to the ITR and let's use this method that I learned and let's see if I can, maybe I need to try some different onsets to get the motor skills moving in a different way. Maybe I need to stop training a vowel and start training the a vowel and reaping the benefits that training a will give me after a couple weeks. Maybe I should try that. Okay, we don't always know the perfect answer. You have to learn and get better through trial and experimentation. Okay, all right. Sorry for the technical difficulties today. I'm going to um, take those files, download them, probably put them together into a, into one file. But um, any of you that are watching this particular video, there's like part one and part two below. Internet was was disconnecting. I'm sorry, we didn't get to Q and A's today, but I, I wanted to go over this, and I hope it was helpful for you guys. Love you all, and uh, thank you for coming. And I'll see you on the group, um, and we'll do this again in another week or so. Have a good day.